we have an unboxing. <laughs> this came all the way from Scotland. And it's a guitar that was owned by a chap called George Williamson. And it was sent to me by uh, Strat Pack. It's six kilos. It has had a dish dent there and a dent there. And you see how clever I am cutting off my address as if that would matter. It's also had a couple of dents there and there. So let's just hope that Strat Pack did a really good job of uh, packing it. Okay, let's see what we got now. Open up the top. Oh, well, thank goodness we don't have millions of beads. We have foam. Oh, and we have more foam. And it's in the case. The guitar is very old. I know what make it is, but I'll not tell you just yet. It's not what you would call one of the big names, but it's a guitar that has a history with it. And the gentleman who sent it to me, Strat Pack, has sent me a long email detailing the history. So we'll put all this away. Next thing I'll do is I'll get rid of all this junk and come back to you once I've got the guitar ready to open. So this is the first time of opening it. It is a 1960s guitar and it's a Futurama 2. And look, he sent me some goodie bags for Georgie Girl and she loves those. Thank you very much, Strap Pack and a set of strings. As I say, it's a Futurama 2 and it looks to be in lovely condition. Some lovely pickups, quite original and it just needs a good setup from me. Now this is actually very good because you very seldom get the Futurama with the genuine sticker on the top still. So this is all in pretty good shape but what I'll do now is I'll set it down and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to go. This looks different. That was missing off the last Futurama I did, that chrome thing. Okay, come back to you when I'm more knowledgeable. Do a little bit with the case. It doesn't need much done with it, but I'll get it oiled and tidied up. It doesn't need an awful lot of work, as I say. The inside does need some TLC just to stop it making it going any further. But I shall soon do that. Anything in here, Mr. Strat Pack? Oh, the trim arm, which is very rare. That's very rare to find that with the, the uh, Futurama. And it still fits and everything. Ain't that a nice thing? Right, okay, come back to you when I'm more knowledgeable, as I say. Right, I have done some research on this. And it's a very early 1964 model, Futurama 2. The Hagstrom guitars. They sold them as Hagstrom 2s in America. Now this, as I say, is a very early model, which and it's rare to have the the vibrato arm or trem arm with it. Now it's not my, as you can see too, that the uh, threads are gone. I might be able to do something about that. It's not my intention to bring this up to brand new. This is more like a museum piece to me. So that what I'm going to do is get it cleaned up, get it working, make sure it's all steady and solid and everything working on it and give it a good clean up and maybe do some preventive, ma preventative maintenance on it uh, and the neck etc. It's been a very well played guitar, the frets are very worn but it's not going to be a stage guitar for anybody in the future. I'll just bring you down here to let you see the fret. The neck is very dirty down there. It won't need to be scraped, that will come away with uh, uh, good cleaning. And the head is particularly good. I like it because it's got this Futurama original on it. Some of it's coming away. I'm going to try to fix that. I know it's early because of the serial number, which you may be able to make up there, 1224. Now, they started their serial numbers at 100. So this would be the, uh, the 224th guitar off the line. Got a skunk stripe, not too much damage there. These would be ultra fragile. Now I know the name of those. Let me just tell. 
because they're usually gone well and truly but they're called B and H now what you usually see with these is the cover missing and I'll just take oh, there's a screw missing there right there's two screws on it actually I'm not going to just dive into this unless I'm sure all right that one's loose so I, if I, I don't want to take the cover but what you usually see, those are from quite rare pickups, uh, sorry, quite rare tuners. What you usually see is square brass tuners on the back of this. Now, with the tape beneath it, see that plastic tape beneath it? It makes me think that maybe George Williamson replaced these tuners, replaced the original Hagstrom tuners with these ones, because these would have been expensive in their day. Yes, they are quite expensive tuners. But the original tuners would have been square brass things with no cover over it. But these B and H, which I will look up and see exactly what that means. B and H, and put it on the screen. But this is more, not even a restoration. It's just bringing it back to life again. So I'll come back to you when I'm... What I'm going to do is take it completely apart. I'm going to try not to touch the wiring unless I have to do something to fix it. I think what maybe I could do now is test the wiring and see where we are with it whilst we're uh, recording. Right. Okay, that's going to have to be looked at. Probably the first thing I'll do is look at that. Okay, I'm going to put that back on again properly and then we'll get stuck into taking it apart. Now, these are wound over and over and over again. Like you've got a lot of, a lot of binding on it. George Williamson played in a lot of the bands around Ayrshire and uh, I, by now I probably put a picture up of George which was sent to me by Strat Pack and he played in some of the halls etc around Ayrshire and I'll show you a couple of pictures of them and I'll show you a picture of George when he was young playing this very guitar now the interesting thing about this guitar, George was the only owner. He bought it from New, and uh, we don't know exactly where he bought it from from New, but he owned this guitar from the very start. And the picture you'll see of George, probably he's about 16 years old, with his other band members playing the uh, this guitar in the picture. And as you can see from the other band members here, it was the time of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the hairstyles sort of reflect that and sort of the clothes styles. Now as I was taking that off, this came off, which is a chrome alumin al aluminium piece. Yeah, I think that's aluminium. So keep them all very tight and handy. And I suspect those plastic things will come off too. I'm going to take it all apart anyway, because I want to make sure that it's uh, protected for the future from rust etc so let's have a look at the truss rod while we're here because one screw so close to where the truss rod should be ah I see why I looked at the other end I looked at the the replication end and the truss rod that's the lock of the truss rod the truss rod adjusters down at that end so I think I'll probably turn that round and we'll have a nice shiny piece for there. The nut, uh, let me just see, I actually think it's bone. These weren't cheap guitars. If you're ever thinking of collecting guitars, Futuramas and Hagstrom guitars are very much sought after. This guitar, when it's finished and in its original state like this here, anything from 1200 pounds down 
a really bad statement you get for four or five hundred pounds but if you're in, if you're interested in investing in guitars Hagstrom's Wilkinson's any of those 60s guitars now this was uh, made the, um, the uh, Hagstrom had a deal with Selmer and Hagstrom sold amps and so did Selmer and Selmer then made these guitars with a, with a Hagstrom la license I think, I think, from reading all the stuff about it, it was made in Sweden, because that's where Hagström is. Maybe it's Hagström. I don't know. I don't have any Swedish friends to tell me, but it could be Hagström. 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 But a Swedish guitar, they will only increase in value, and if you take good care of them. They will uh, appreciate. So this guitar, interesting thing, one of the small things that I notice is that the screws, for a guitar that's uh, almost 60 years old, those screws aren't rusted at all. And you find some of the more modern screws, the guitar is only 20 years old, they're completely rusted out and I'm having to replace them. But those are very good condition. Again, just before I ha hang up on you, I'll just let you see that George must have been a very avid player because if you see the the wear and tear I will try to push some of that back again but I'm not going to go crazy because this is more of a sentimental guitar and it frets are very thin now after all these years can you, I don't know whether you can see that but they are quite thin the next job is going to be looking at the electrics so I'll come back to you Okay, let's start taking this apart and seeing what's wrong with the electrics. Okay, that's all the screws off. I'm always very nervous about this because of a very high sheen and a very big depth of 3D there. Oh. Right, okay, <laughs> so that sort of answers the reason the, the reason why it, uh, it wasn't making any sounds. Uh, right, we've, got, we've only got the earth wire there. And I see that George, hope George doesn't mind me using his first name, he's done some modifications here because he obviously must have changed pickups and things like that for the better. So we'll come back to the body later and we'll have a closer look at the electrics. The size of that capacitor and the way it's wired is very different. It's not earthed so that will need to be seen too. All the pickups, that one's slightly, that one's, that middle one's earthed. They are, I can't read what it says on it. That's a thousand ohms. Right, that's 500 ohms and that's 500 ohms and it says it's B at the top 241-NC it's like anthropology and there's this Suzuki 2 pa con 2 megafards whatever the hell that means 500k 5k resistors Right, okay, well I'm going to try not to do anything with that except for to get it working again. I can't see what it says around the sides. Anyway. Okay, do you think we should do something to try to get some noise out of this? Right, okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to just take off the pickups. Could you see the way the pickups have to come off? The pickups have to come off this way. And this can rust over the time as well. That's it. So I'll just turn it over now and we'll look at them. As you can see, there's some that's all crumbling away, and there's something there. It might have been a bit of padding to try to get height because there is no adjustment for for height as you notice and that comes off 
I'll just do something there to make sure it doesn't rust and let's just lift it out without damaging any wires and you can see for yourself I'm just not going to force any wires so I'll just let you see for yourself the color the board used to be that's okay that felt's fine that's just a protector of the string is that has that been damaged let me just see oh dear let's hope that's the earth and not an important one because it's not attached to anything it might be just sitting there as an earth can't get you any closer unfortunately but I discovered that that wasn't a broken wire that was just another little bit of that piping that they put on to try to keep the sides away from each other but what I have discovered is that there is this little wire here should be connected to that and when they're connected let me just show you you get the pickup working that's one pickup which I can fix now I need to look at the other one but I'm going to come back to you on that because that took me half an hour to find now this one wasn't as easy to take off but I've traced it I can get a noise to there but it looks like there's a problem from there onwards I w I'm getting I don't know where you can hear that a tiny bit of sound but not much to me that sounds like the pickup's gone but again I'm going to go on my hands and knees and see where I threw that little bit of tubing and come back to you when I have more definitive answers interesting uh, doing archaeology like this these uh, tubes, those are the wire coverings, but these pickups are just are just magnetically attached to that. So they have these other tubes on each side to stop them moving about. Clever, simple idea. But here's the problem with this pickup. Got noise coming to there, but nothing there. And I've checked the earth. I can't check from there to there because there's no way to do that because this is just coiled around that, not attached to it. But the earth, oh, <laughs> the earth is fine to there. So the pickups got a problem inside it and needs to be rewound. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is remove the pickups, both of them, because they both need to be soldered, and then I can clean this and get this as clean as possible. So we have that pickup off, and I'm leaving it with the chappie on Friday to get repaired, and that's the one that is good. So I'm going to put that away now, but I'm going to clean this and I'm not sure whether you guys want to sit around and watch me do that but I'll leave the camera running anyway and if you find it interesting you can watch it if you don't find it interesting you can feck off <laughs> Father Ted feck off not not the rude word and what do you say to a cup feck off cup right okay so the first thing to do is take those knobs off Oh, and I don't think they've been taken off for years. Let me just... That's not the good enough one. Let's hope that fits. Ah, right, okay. One. And why am I taking these off? Because it'll be much easier to clean the thing whenever it's flat. Now, the things that Mr. Williamson did are putting on those two switches... And he put them on a rubber sheet because he didn't want to crack this, which is very good. And 
I'm tempted just to leave it as it is. The problem with that is that it looks pretty ugly. I might be able to I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to try to trim around that and make it fit better so you don't see the ugliness of that. So that's what I was going to do. Oh, I left the upper light on, which throws too much yellow. So once I take off these switches, etc., etc., it's just cleaning, and I will then let you escape. These are very good, very good quality pots. You can tell by the material they're made from. These are not just the cheapy pots you get nowadays. You just look at the quality of that material. So it's quite possible he has changed those pots out. Because I need to do some more research, if I can do, on these fairly rare guitars. Where you can't really find an awful lot about them. So if I do research... I'll let you know what I find on the screen. I'm going to take you off too. If anything, that is the place that needs to be strengthened more. Because it all, when you put the plug in and out, the only thing holding it is this little sheet. So I may, may, it depends how I'm feeling or what I see. I might put some strength behind that just to stop it in future. Well, I'll come to you in a minute. I'm going to do these ones if I can get down on them. No, nope, it's going to be a uh, pair of snub nose. Careful. When you look at these things, you sort of realize how much better quality some of the stuff was in the 60s than now. I would say these switches here, these particular switches are not 60s. I would say they're probably in the 70s. But even that, you're still getting better quality. Of course, if we didn't buy from Wish.com and Timu and all these places from China, maybe we'd get better quality. But uh, I'm just saying something there, right? So... I was right to worry about where the jack socket plug is because it's the place that does get cracked. And if you see there, there's a crack there starting. So I'm going to put something definitely behind that to protect that once I get this plug off. Once I get this. Weisher out. Weisher's, the Weisher's giving me bother. I think it is. I think it is. Right. Okay. So all that electric should fall away. And you can see it was done after market. So I'm going to give this a good clean and see what we can do about strengthening it for the future. So all you things could go in there. These are all going to be cleaned, not on camera, because you would be bored to tears. And I think I might even turn that in. Oh, that's just ordinary plastic. So I'll find something better than that. Because it's aftermarket. Had it been original, I would have kept it as it is. But you see those switches? Are they made of wood? I, that looks like wood to me. But let's just see. Those washers look like cheap washers. So the, the pots are good, but maybe the washers are not. But that definitely looks like wood. Let me just wet it with my... Yeah, that's those are wooden switches. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> right, okay. That there, and that's going for repair. So then there's this. Right, clear some space. Might as well just let the camera roll. Let the good times roll. So what am I going to use to strengthen that? I need to look at the guitar itself to see what room I've got around it. Okay, I'll come back to you. Okay, I found a fairly hard plastic washer, which I will put on the inside and glue to the inside 
to give it strength to stop that crack further for me. And when I put on the jack socket, I'm going to put on a larger outside washer, which I will not glue. I'll let it, I'll let it stay that way. It'll spread the load a little bit more than a tight thing. Uh, on this, I'm going to create a couple of washers. Maybe I've got washers that I can cut. Maybe I don't. And if I cut the washer off one side, straight down the sides, it might give more strength, but I don't know. I'm not I'm not not thinking that would be a great idea, but we'll see. I might actually put another little sheet. I'll have lots of these boards. I might put one underneath there. I might actually put one the whole way across there and redrill those holes, but we'll see. I'm going to use epoxy on the inside of that to give it more strength. And this stuff stinks. I think I complained about it before. It stinks like the worst kind of pee you can imagine. But it, it does work well. So let's... Just to get... Oh, it stinks. It stinks. Oh, mommy. I'm just giving it a smear there. I'm spilling it all over the place, but that's beside the point. And I'll put a little bit on the... Oh. I'm not, a, I'm not one that will get all upset about smells. Because there's some... When you're, for, when you're a father and you've got children... Smells is something you have to live with, but this is rank. Now, that is dead center. Do I trust it? <laughs> you're stupid, Austin. So busy doing what you're doing that you're not thinking about what you're doing. Right, okay, I don't trust it. I'm going to take it off and let it sit. Now that's, God, that's almost rock solid, glued together, but being white you don't see it. Okay, while that was drying, it still hasn't dried yet, I cut out a piece of uh, pick guard that I have, spare pick guard, and I measured up the holes and I put the two holes there that'll work together. And I think on the other side, rather than using a dirty piece of plastic like that there, I'll use, I'll use an, a nice washer. So that's the plan. Put that underneath just to give it some strength instead of having to use that, that plastic which is homemade cutout. Look at the state of my bench. But we got the job done. We've got everything we need to put everything back together again. So I'm going to tidy this up like that. So let's go. Okay, we're going to put this back together now with one pickup. Okay, that's nice and solid now. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue on the strengthener at the back. So I put the super glue on this. It gets very smoky, this super glue. And I'm going to get it on my hands, of course. Okay, you know, you behave and I'll come back to you. It's not the end of the world if it needs to be reamed out a little bit, but I don't want to have to. So I'm going to let that sit, come back to you when it's real hard. Okay, that's pretty hard now. While that was working, I uh, gluing, I polished up the chrome on the pickup. This is the working pickup. And I took the screws off and I lightly sanded their heads with some 2500 and they're lying in that stuff that I like, crust. Oh, I think I'll show you it again. It's crust, hammerite crust. Uh, these were only very slightly rusted, but the good thing about them is that once you put the crust on them, it forms a black crust, and that stops any rust from forming in future, which is a great idea. It does, on those ones you can hardly see it, but it, it is a great idea. It, there wasn't very much rust on that. 
Right, so I'm sitting too far away from this, but that's my life story. Right, so I've measured the distance of there to there, and there's quite a lot of distance, so I'm safe enough to put these on. Uh, and they won't stick up too far. Matter of fact, they did stick up a little bit too far originally. Right, now what I'm going to do off camera is take that and skim that down as low as I can. I thought I had it down as low as I can, but obviously not. I must look up about resistors, why they need resistors. That's an interesting thing. Let me just tighten this up too. I've never used resistors. But they're a funny color for resistor. But then you're talking 60 years ago, so I'm not that expertise. I'm not that expert on it. Right, so that's that's it, and it's going to go back in the guitar, but not just yet. What I'm going to do now is just set that to the side and finish off this, put the screws back in again, and do the other one that's going for repair, and then I'll bring the body back. Nope, I'm not happy. Everything there is fine except for that there. That looks really dirty around there with uh, that plastic thing that I've cut down. So I'm going to have to find washers to fit that size because it make it much nicer looking. Just take it, 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 it hits your eye as soon as you look at the thing. It looks dirty around there. So I'm going to measure it and see if I can find some washers or order some up. So that didn't work. So what I've done is I've, I've opened up two washers and halved them down the sides. Well, I don't think you call them halved them down the sides, but you put them on like that and they'll, they do fit like that. And then I'm going to clean those bolts up before I put them on properly. There you go, the bolts are on there. I've sanded them and cleaned them. I wouldn't say they're the cleanest bolts on the planet, but they're, what are they, 40 years old? So I'll tighten them up. And then next time you see them in the guitar, I've noticed another thing, just while I was at it. The, uh, the plastic on the shielding of the cable has gone. So I'm gonna have to put, do something with that. Hopefully it's not gone the whole way through. Because I don't really want to replace this shielding cable because it's very good. It's very well done. And I love the way it's been. That hasn't been soldered. I have to put a little bit of solder on that. But I love the way it's, that it looks. Right. I'm only coming back on to show you that. And to, and to say that I need to do this video in two halves. Because this is a special guitar. And the body and everything being put together is going to be another 30 or minute video or so. So I'm going to cut that now and as soon as we get the pickups back and get them done, we'll put the other part up. All right.